Good afternoon. My name's Justin. Welcome to my channel. I play guitar on songs in Nashville. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about my old deluxe reverb. It's an amp that I've had for a really long time. I bought it when I first moved to Nashville. Um, I think I got it in like 2007 or 8. I moved here in 06. Uh, I just thought you had to have one. I, I thought you had to have a telly and a deluxe reverb. <laughs> and so I bought it and it became my main touring rig. Um, for the rest of my time that I spent on the road, you know, the next like six years or so. And I still use it. I still use it a lot. It's a really great amp. And I want to talk about five things that uh, most people probably don't know about the Deluxe. One of these things I want to talk about, um, I discovered a way to change the tone of the reverb with the amp, which is crazy. I did not know this was possible, but it is. So we'll get to that. First thing, you should try running um, volume and treble on 10 and bass like off, or maybe at most three, just down really low. It's awesome. It's like rock guitar solo tone, you know, don't need any pedals. I, I have no pedals on, this is what it sounds like. check this out. Here's a, a song. I'll play a solo with this setting. Again, no pedals. You're hearing reverb from the vibrato channel of the amp. Volume is on 10. Treble's on 10. Bass is uh, not totally off. It's at like two and, and a half. It's low, under three, right? Here we go. Pretty awesome, right? Like, it, it's more dynamic than like a pedal, you know, pushing your amp. Uh, it's nice and open. There's loads of sustain. It's like what you want out of a pedal that you are going to use for solos, um, but it's better than any pedal. <laughs> So that's the first thing. That's uh, the first thing that I think most people don't use their deluxe or know that it exists, you know? You don't think volume and treble on 10 and bass off is going to sound great, but it sounds freaking awesome. <laughs> Second thing uh, you should be doing with your deluxe reverb, um, you should be using it as a head. Uh, I think some people do this, you know, but really it's like a good grab-and-go combo. Um, I use mine as a head all the time. It's being used as one right now. I'm running into my garage. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. But also, um, I say this all the time, I have a Morgan 112 cab in the garage, mic'd up with a Heil PR30, going through my Chandler TG2 straight into the Apollo, okay? So when you're hearing on the channel, when you're hearing my guitars and they're, they're plugged into a real cab, uh, for late night overdubs or just to get different sounds. Sometimes I use an Oxbox or the Two Notes Torpedo, or I'll use the Rev, which is an awesome all-in-one direct recording situation. Um, but generally, if you see an amp on and uh, I'm not using the Aux or the uh, Two Notes and the amp's not the Rev, like it's my Morgan cab in the garage. I have a couple other cabs down there that I switch in every once in a while, but... Um, the Morgan cabinet is as tall as the Deluxe is wide, about, and it's as wide as the Deluxe is tall. It's kind of like turning the Deluxe on its side, but it's deeper um, front to back. So I feel like I get a little bit more low mids out of the Morgan cabinet than I do out of the, the Deluxe itself when I'm running it like a combo. My friend Rob McNelly, awesome guitar player, one of my absolute favorites, um, one of the absolute best in this town. 
He likes the deluxe reverb so much that for a while he was carrying a deluxe and then an extension cabinet that was also a deluxe reverb. It just didn't have the slot in the front um, panel for the amp to slide in. It was literally black Tolex, same grill cloth, looked exactly like a deluxe reverb, same dimensions, same angled front panel, same angle here. Uh, it was just an extension cab. And the, his reasoning for that was he loves the way the combo sounds mic'd up so much but he still wants to have his amp sitting next to him with all the controls. So he runs a speaker cable out to the same size and shape cabinet, same materials, you know, um, with the speaker that he likes. And then he has his controls right next to him on the session. I used to do that too. I just, I just used the Morgan cabinet as my speaker that would go in the ISO booth. It's really nice using a combo amp for a head <laughs> if you don't have cartridge because then your controls are elevated. It's kind of like this nice little end table right here. You can set your slides and your capo and I put my coffee on it. I know that's probably a big old no-no for, for some people. Hot steaming coffee, coffee sitting on my vintage Fender amp. <laughs> that's what I did. Um, but you know, it's just kind of nice. You have all the controls use the same speaker in your ISO booth, and it's just like you're playing the combo, but you're able to control it on the fly without, without having to get up, go into the ISO room, change your settings, plug into the other channel or whatever, you know. So that's number two. Number one, volume and treble, 10, bass off. It's amazing. Number two, use an extension cab. Uh, it, use the amp as a head. It's really awesome. Number three, check out the normal channel. The normal channel is great. It's slightly different. Uh, it doesn't have reverb or tremolo, but it's also not quite as gainy. It just has a, I think it's a slightly sweeter, rounder sound, you know? And if you, if you live on one spot of one amp for an extremely long time and it starts to get stale, just try something slightly different, you know? There's a lot of power in making a subtle change that can re-inspire um, you and get you interested in a piece of gear that you, you know, maybe you wore out your one setting, you know. Don't don't write the whole amp off. Well, I need a new amp. I mean, that's cool. I like collecting amps. I have loads of them. But um, also, there, there's other sounds in that amp, right? So here, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into the normal channel, turn my crazy settings down on the vibrato channel. Let's go four. I run the treble a little higher bass a little lower and uh, here's the here's the normal channel I'm running pretty hot pickups like p90s are are hot you know so man it just sounds really great nice and clean And then raise the pickup output, or sorry, my uh, my volume. just volume on four, you know. Uh, here, I'll, I'll change guitars. We'll, we'll play a couple, something that's slightly not quite as hot. How about the biscuit? Everybody loves the biscuit. I stepped on my uh, Boss DM2 and started clocking, started oscillating, get that weird uh, tick tock noise. So, um, more normal channel. That was a bridge pickup.
nice and clean and spanky, but with a hint of grit when you dig in. Let's do the exact same settings on the vibrato channel. Um, and I'm, yeah, I got the reverb on, so. This is killing me. Got a tune. Much better, much better. So uh, that's number three. Use the normal channel, it's cool. Number four, jumper the channels. Now, I know a lot, of you, a lot of you are thinking, that's not possible. You can't do that. They're out of phase. It doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work like a Marshall, but you can get around the out of phase problem. Check it out. So I'm into the first output of the vibrato channel. I'm going to plug in a little jumper cable from output two. Sorry, these are inputs. <laughs> input two and uh, over to input one. The trick, okay? The trick is using wildly different EQs on the two channels. Then they don't phase cancel. The reason the channels are out of phase is because the vibrato channel uses, I think, half of an extra tube for a gain stage, and that flips the phase. So it's it's not like you can change two wires or you know use some special patch cable. There's something. Um, there is a piece of gear called a Barber launch pad. It's an ABY box and you have the option of flipping the phase. So you can flip the phase of the signal going into the channel, and then it's flipped again, and then your two channels are in phase. What I'm gonna do here, I'm just using a regular patch cable, and I'm just jumpering it like I would, you know, an old Marshall Plexi. And it's super cool, so check this out. So let's go all treble on the vibrato channel and let's go all bass on the um, normal channel. So this, this is at four still, both channels on. That's really cool. Now you'll notice the reverb is, is loud and proud, right? I've got the reverb set on three, uh, and all of my treble is on the vibrato channel. Now here's where it gets really interesting. This is the thing that I discovered when making this video. This is super cool. You can change the tone of the reverb with your channels jumpered. So what I'm gonna do is put all the bass on the vibrato channel, all the treble on the normal channel. You're still going to hear both, but it's only that really bassy signal that's getting through the reverb circuit, right? Just like right now, it's only the treble. That's why the reverb is super bright. Mm -hmm. Check it out. So, full treble, bass off, treble off, full bass. It's quieter, but it's also not as bright and metallic and clangy. Mm -hmm. And I'll turn my reverb from three to five to compensate for it, it being quieter. That's awesome. So let's go back to um, tip number one or thing number one you should be doing with your deluxe reverb 
And let's put uh, both volumes at 10. <laughs> Man, it's almost fuzzy, isn't it? Let's try this solo again with this sound with with both channels on 10 um both channels on 10 treble on the normal channel bass on the vibrato channel and then you know i've got off here i've got bass off here and bass off here otherwise it's 10 10 0 is what the two channels are set at it's just one's got treble one's got bass couple of really interesting note choices in that solo but whatever um, you get the idea you can jumper the channels even though they're out of phase you just have to have wildly different EQ settings on each okay simple right or you can buy a barber launch pad and then have the exact same EQ settings and get the slightly rounder normal channel with the slightly more aggressive vibrato channel and you know reverb to taste the cool trick is that the reverb the, the only part of the jumpered sound that you're hearing that's going through the reverb circuit is what you have set on the vibrato channel. So you can change the reverb tone with that. That's awesome. Okay, so that's number four. Uh, number five is um, if you're using this as a pedal platform, uh, you should try my favorite settings, which is like four, seven, three is what I call it. I go vibrato channel only. Set the old patch cable aside. Volume at four, treble at seven, bass at three, or slightly less. That I guess that's that's the tip, really. It's just turn the bass down. It just does not sound I, I this is subjective, but in a mix, it doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound right. It sounds wrong. To me, high bass setting on a deluxe reverb in a mix sounds wrong. The reason for that is because so, so many other amp, or sorry, so many other instruments in a mix exist in that low end setting. Bass, drums, keyboard, whatever. It gets clouded up and hidden. And so if you're setting treble high, bass high, and the amp's clean or clean ish, you get this smiley face EQ, right? Well, the bottom half of that smiley faced EQ gets hidden. So then you're left with this thin top half, right? And the, this is subtle. I, I know, you, you know, you might try it and you're like, well, I don't hear it that much, maybe a little bit. Man, subtleties make a huge difference in a mix. And one of the hardest things to learn for anybody doing sessions is how to dial their sound in so, so that it sounds great in a mix. This is something that I learned from... Um, the late, uh, great JT Cornfloss. When he would check his old telly, I mean, it sounded amazing, but it was like, man, that's got some frequencies in it that are not ultra-pleasing by itself. Then you hear it with the band, and you're like, 
oh, oh my goodness, <laughs> I get it. You know, the things that were poking out were like upper mids, um, not a lot of bottom end, um, high, like highs, a lot of highs. And then in the mix, you know, just what sticks through is this nice, big, bigger sounding than by itself, aggressive sound. And I remember, like, the first time I worked with him was, like, a master class. I just absorbed everything I could. I also made sure that I wasn't scared to play, but I also also was trying to not be the new guy who's like, here's what I get hired for. I have to do this on every song. You know, that's everybody's favorite when you feel like you've come to work with the competition. <laughs> you don't want to be that, you know, you're, um, you're on the hunt with everybody, right? Everybody's trying to figure out what the thing is, uh, that, that the song needs to be. And you have to understand that you are part of a team um, in that effort, right? It's not, we hired this guitar player so he can save the day every time. Because in your effort to save the day and make sure that you're playing the thing that you need to play that people like that you do, you're probably not listening as well, you know? The best players, to me, the ones that have the longest careers, they might not necessarily be the most popular right now, but they probably were at some point, um, but they have longevity. The best ones, I did a whole video on this. Um, it's called Session Players with the Longest Careers Do This or something like that. You can find it. Um, they're constantly looking for moments to create some kind of magic with other instruments. Hey, I've got this melody in the fourth bar of the chorus. Or hey, does somebody want to uh, answer my turnaround lick? I'm playing in the first bar, maybe they can play in the second bar. Um, or what's a band move we can do when we go from the down chorus into the up chorus? Like the people that are that are on the hunt for those moments um, where it really does sound like this band's been rehearsing together for years, or they could be on tour together. Whoa, they're reading each other's minds. Well, they, they talked about it and figured it out. Um, how did I get on that rabbit trail? Oh, my first session with JT and uh, trying to not be an annoying new guy while also trying to contribute and listen. And, I, you know, I got so many lessons from him just sitting in the same room, you know. What an incredible player. And the sweetest, um, most soft-spoken, you know, kind of kind of short, kind of wiry guy, very unassuming. And then he picked up a guitar and you were like, oh, <laughs> just incredible. So... Anyway, now I'm just reminiscing. Uh, there's five things that you should be doing with your deluxe reverb. I hope you all have a great, great day. Um, last note on the fifth thing. Now I'm running through my mind. Did I get it all out? Uh, this setting for me is, is for pedal boards, okay? Um, three to four on the volume, around seven on treble, and around three on the bass. You want the volume to not be dead clean because these kinds of amps, these 60s fenders, like deluxe reverbs and basements and whatever, the mids, there's no mids knob. The mids happen when you turn the amp up and you get the tubes to work a little bit. So that's your mids knob, right? And then when you do that, to me, the bass, the low bottom end gets low, like looser and whatever. And it's really cool at extreme settings, like we were playing just a little bit ago. But, uh, it, it can it, it can not sound as good in a mix. That's the big thing. So here's this sound. Um, I'm gonna turn on a Nordland and a delay pedal and just play one more little thing for you.
so that's a little bit of timeline, a little bit of Nordland, you know. Um, uh, also, step on here's my throwback, just the throwback in the timeline. <laughs> Very cool. So that those are my settings. That that's number five. Those are my settings for a pedal board, right? Turn the bass down. Um, it's a big deal. So anyway, this time, truly. See you later. Have a great day.